And before we begin our meal um, and our brunch, Sister Carol will be sharing some good news with you about the college. Please join me in welcoming our beloved president, Sister Carol Jean Vale. Thank you, and good afternoon, Golden Griffins. It's always a privilege to welcome alumni to the college, and it is just alumni today, although we do adopt husbands as well. <laughs> the event is a joyous occasion, but it's a little bit different in a couple of ways. First of all, it is the first event that we have had since COVID. You are the first group to gather. After months of empty hallways, stressful decisions, and more Zoom meetings than I can count, I'm overjoyed to welcome you home to your alma mater. And how appropriate that those who have known and loved the college the longest are the first to come back. Today we are welcoming two new classes into the Golden Griffins, 1970 and 1971. The women from these two classes are nothing short of resilient and persistent. The pandemic caused the cancellation of their in-person milestone 50th reunion weekends in June 2020 and 2021. I wanna thank the members of these classes for remaining strong and dedicated during a difficult time. Your classes entered the college during the late turbulent 1960s. It was also an interesting time at Chestnut Hill College. For example, as a student, you were not allowed to wear slacks. Yeah, yeah. Now they wear pajama bottoms. The sisters still lived in the dorms. There was a curfew. And the men you were dating had to cool their heels in the social room, waiting for you to come down. Now they sleep in the residence halls. I'm sure that never happened then. <laughs> At the same time in the wider world, women were bursting into the 1970s with enthusiasm and determination, ready to claim their place in society and to demand equal opportunities with men. It is with genuine pride that I reflect on the rigorous academic programs the college offered women that enabled them to excel in their chosen profession, to be leaders in fields previously dominated by men, and to rise to break many glass ceilings. <laughs> Let's take a moment to remember what was happening in society in the late 60s and early 70s, a period of great cultural change. I think it's still rocking the world today. The Beatles released their final album, Let It Be, one month after announcing the band's breakup. The first jumbo jet, the Boeing 747, made its debut commercial flight from New York to London. In 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. The Civil Rights Act was signed into law and Richard Nixon was elected president. In 1960, is that Pat Canning clapping? <laughs> in 1969, the first men landed on the moon. Woodstock took place in New York, and Sesame Street debuted. The top song in 1971 was Joy to the World by Three Dog Night. The top song in 1970 was Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel. The US voting age was lowered from 21 to 18 years old when the 26th Amendment was ratified. Walt Disney World Resort opened in Orlando, Florida. And I, I love this one. The Volkswagen Beetle cost $1,769. And could be filled with gas for 36 cents a gallon. 
Students at colleges and universities around the nation were protesting the Vietnam War. And all of this provides context to the years in which you were students, an interesting, challenging, and transformational time in history. Since 1924, Chestnut Hill College has provided students with an education and experience that fosters their evolution as individuals and as members of society. Nearly 100 years later, the college continues this undertaking and with just as much zeal, creativity, and heart as it did those many years ago. While we remain conscious of our past and respectful of our roots, we are committed to the future and the needs of the 21st century. Each day throughout our hallways, in our classrooms, across our campus, the values and ethos of the founding Sisters of St. Joseph are taught by word and example. The college has, I believe, kept true to the original objective to meet the needs of the time and provide students the opportunity to grow personally, spiritually, and professionally. This is achieved by offering programs and experiences that further their dedication to God, to the global community, to each other, and to the earth. And so at this time, at the request of the chair people of this gathering, I want to provide you with some updates about what the college is doing to remain steadfast to its values, values that were as present in the year 1924 as they will be at our centennial in, 19, in 2024. The introduction of six new academic centers has transformed the approach the college takes to governing the academic programs of our students. Each center, business, data and society, integrated humanities, natural and behavioral sciences, professional psychology, and education, advocacy, and social justice provide students with a wide range of interdisciplinary courses that enhance critical thinking and problem solving while maintaining the core liberal arts experience. Our communications department will be sharing a more in-depth look at the six new centers in the spring. As many of you are aware, the college will be constructing a new entrance to the Sugarloaf campus. A safe and welcoming entrance is the key to unlocking the future of the college and optimizing the Sugarloaf campus. There are three new initiatives that emerged during COVID as we pondered how best to use the resources that we have to enhance the Sugarloaf campus. Now we have several new programs whose seeds have been planted. The Wellness Collaborative is the overarching umbrella under which several exciting new initiatives are housed. It is a holistic collaborative approach to the education of the whole person from advanced age Excuse me, I'll start again. From infancy to advanced age. We have changed our approach. Now we're gonna educate everybody. The collaborative includes an experiential wellness initiative, the Montessori CHIME program, and two related but different neurodiversity programs. The Experiential Wellness Initiative examines the relationship among mind, body, and spirit, the three components of the human person. Experiences will be designed to address the question, what does it mean to be a human person in the 21st century? Given the revelation of science and technology, we intend to discover how we can best understand our place in the global community in order to work towards a more inclusive and just society. We believe that now, as in the past, creating a synergy among mind, body, and spirit produces efficacy that leads to a meaningful human life. Through the introduction of experiential programs for the larger public in art, music, spirituality, horticultural therapy, psychology, to name a few, we will attract new audiences to campus to benefit from the expertise we are well positioned to share. 
The Wellness Initiative will also explore the sensitive questions facing society, inviting area experts to examine both sides of issues and provide an inclusive, welcoming environment that allows for genuine civil dialogue between expertise, experts and the audiences. The initiative kicks off this month with a week of special programming in collaboration with the college's Integrated Center for Humanities. You can find information on the website if you're interested in attending anything. A decades old program Montessori education is enjoying a resurgence, not just in the United States, but throughout the world, as educators and parents try to determine the optimal approach to teaching and learning. Studies indicate that Montessori holds the key to unlocking the doors that keep socioeconomically disadvantaged children from competing with their peers who live in better financed school districts. Since the 1970s, the college has credentialed Montessori educators. For decades, we were one of only 11 United States colleges and universities accredited by the Montessori Association. Celebrating 100 years this past year, the Montessori method of teaching was first designed to provide quality education to the socio-disadvantaged children living in Rome. Maria Montessori's original intent is being reappropriated and is seen as being able to bridge the opportunity and achievement gap so often experienced by our youth. We're in the process of expanding our involvement in Montessori education, offering programs that begin in infancy and extend to the therapy of older adults with dementia. In collaboration with Norwood Fontbonne Academy, we are prepared to develop the college curriculum for the instruction of those who wish to teach infant toddlers, six to nine year olds, and nine to 12 year olds. We already deliver the ever popular pre-K credential. The Pennsylvania Department of Education has asked the college to create an elementary education degree based on Montessori methods. They will accredit this degree so that graduates will be eligible to teach in both public and private schools. Over the past two years, we have received grants amounting to over $500,000 to credential Montessori teachers at several area schools and to provide them with the very expensive Montessori teaching aids needed both for the teachers participating in the program and the children enrolled in the program. Our current grant pays for an expert to develop the infant toddler curriculum. That program will be housed at Norwood Fontbon Academy. It is our hope to work with Philadelphia and other urban areas in Pennsylvania and beyond to educate teachers equipped to help children overcome the opportunity and achievement gap. For possibly 10 years, the college has considered what programs it might introduce to meet the needs of those on the autism spectrum. Recently, all of the right people and ideas have coalesced, and we will be introducing two new programs. The first is a college program for students who are highly functioning on the autism spectrum and prepared for college. These students will begin their college experience the summer before their freshman year, with a campus-based residential experience scheduled to begin next summer. The pre-college summer program will last six weeks. Students will be provided with a three-credit college course, cultural experiences, practice and living skills, social and emotional coaching, and academic support. Emotional, social, and academic support will be provided for these students for their entire academic program at Chestnut Hill College. The goal is not only to educate them, but also to strengthen and hone their social and emotional competencies to prepare them for professional and personal success. The second program is a two-year 
life skills to career program with special vocational training to prepare young adults 20 to 30 years old who are mid-level on the spectrum to gain the skills necessary to secure a job and to live as independently as possible. Some may attend selected college classes, others may benefit from vocational training, another group may earn an associate's degree. To prepare them for jobs, internships at neighboring businesses and the college will be available to these students. Our goal is to offer the opportunity to help them grow in independence as well as in emotional and social intelligence so they can function semi-independently throughout their lives. This program will be housed on Sugarloaf with the students living in Loyola Lodge. This building has 32 fully equipped, individually climate controlled rooms such as you would find in a hotel. The presence on campus of these students will generate mentoring and internship opportunities for undergraduate majors and graduate students in multiple disciplines, as well as tutoring and mentoring opportunities. We have had several very encouraging meetings with the Pennsylvania Office of Vocational Rehabilitation as we work with them to be awarded provider status so students can receive state and federal funding to fully support them in the program. Our proposed program for those mid-level on the spectrum has the potential to revolutionize their future and that of their parents and siblings. This is near and dear to the heart of our mission, which exhorts us to discover the most pressing needs in society and to develop programs to meet them. So stay tuned, there's lots more information coming. Don't you know if you are aware, but they would be funded from $80,000 to $120,000 per student per year if we get provider status. You may also be aware that we are fundraising to increase the size of the college's endowment. Two years ago, our endowment was $11.5 million, with more than 80% of those funds restricted to scholarships. One of our goals is to create a healthier balance between the general endowment and unrestricted endowment funds. There are many benefits to growing the endowment. First, it creates an ongoing source of income for the college in perpetuity. It enhances the financial viability of the institution and sends the message of planned long-term stability to our alumni, friends, and donors. Endowments augment the annual fund by providing additional and often critically needed operational support to the college. This includes funds for these beautiful buildings who are quite aged, and emergency responses. Increased support of the general endowment also allows for program expansion. Specifically, our investment priorities include innovation with experiential and cross-disciplinary programming, investing in faculty development, and modernizing the learning environment which we have done very successfully to this point. In summary, a healthier general endowment enables the college to be nimble and invest in new projects responsive to the ever-evolving challenges of education in the 21st century. A gift to the endowment is a gift that continues to contribute to the life of the college in perpetuity and thus has the potential to transform the futures of innumerable generations of students. All of these advances and future endeavors are made possible through you, our most dedicated, loyal, and generous alumni. For many of us, Chestnut Hill College is another home, and I am honored to welcome you back to that home today and promise you that good seeds are being planted for the future of this institution. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Carol. 
And now it's time to enjoy your meal, and afterwards we will have our Golden uh, Griffin's induction ceremony. Thank you very much. <laughs>